Welcome to another edition of the S and D podcast. Dan here with Steve, sponsored by the Schmuck Sports Radio Network. You just listened to a submission by Division One Point One. Hello, Steve. Welcome to this week's show. How are you doing this week? Exhausted. I know you. You <laughs> were at City Field the whole week. Lucky dog. We'll get to that. Dog. That's how much I sweated. Yeah. <laughs> um. We'll get to a lot of that. I, so we're, we're, I will admit, I will admit that I was jealous of people at home because yeah, they're in their air I, I was gonna say that, <laughs> um, but we have a fun pack show. This is our all uh, baseball all star break special of our mid season, where we're gonna talk about the Mets, Yankees, and Give all our views the on the second half, what we expect. And, we uh, get to get to do our rebuttals. Um, yes. Unfortunately, Tom and Mike weren't able to come on the show this week. But we're gonna we're gonna have our own wrinkle, and we're gonna reach out to them and see if they want a rebuttal. Cause I know I'm gonna want some rebuttaling on my award. Well, you don't like your award picks. So far, half and half. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of surprises, um, ba- ups and downs. Basically, so- tonight we're gonna do we'll do the Mets and our second half predictions for them. We're gonna do the net in the National League, and then. We'll do the Yankees, and we'll do the American League as and well. And we cannot forget our special guest this week. Yes, so tune in, tune in later on. Uh, Darren from the 7 Line will be back to join back, us to get his yes. experience from the All-Star Weekend and some upcoming 7 Line events. Uh, so stick tight. We have a fun pack show tonight. We're going to play a little more submission by Division and 1. And then we will talk a little Yankees and American League Baseball. We'll be right back. Back to the SD podcast on the Schmuck Sports Radio. And here with Steve, we're going to start our baseball uh, half season uh, special. With First, before we move on, I would just like to say that the day after the MLB All Star game is the most boringest day in sports. Yes, 365 days a year. It's the only day a year there is not one sporting event on. Yes. That we know of. The there SBs. might be some rugby on somewhere. Yeah, the SBs are on right now. and They may be playing cricket in India. Probably. Anyway, we're Sorry. gonna start. Sorry, talk, I to say we're that. talking about the American League, and more importantly, the Yankees. Right now is the first time in ages. I don't know the exact year off the top of my head because it's been way too long and way before we started well, watching baseball. Well, what are you trying to say? Because maybe I might know it. Maybe I'll get the year. Okay, you got the year. All right. I don't know what you're gonna say, so I got the year. First time the Yankees are in fourth place or lower. You gotta think, ninety three, ninety four. Yeah, so well, the and that's maybe before life. my era watching baseball, which was '95. So yeah, Jeter around yeah. Jeter's first years. So. Anyway, the Yankees are in fourth place right now. They're four and a half out of the first place. Uh, they're in the around. biggest cluster of a division. They are in the biggest cluster of a division. Um, they're in a very competitive division, and they've just been riddled by injuries so far this year. And the pitching has held up for the most part. But hasn't been there as of late. Hasn't been consistent. Um, and also those role players they brought in, the, the yeah, Vernon Wells and the Hafner, they, they've fallen off also. They've fallen off big time. Uh, but the the Yankees are the Yankees. Um, they're getting their injured players back other than the Teixeira. Um, A-Rod is scheduled to be coming back around Monday against the Rangers in that series. So the Yankees... Monday the 22nd. The Yankees are having... The injured players coming back. Um, unfortunately, they rushed back Jeter maybe a day too soon. <laughs> they, and it might have not been rushing because he just pulled his quad. Yeah. I mean, but, he was playing for, what, three weeks before that? But that's like. just one of those injuries that you haven't played in a while, and that happens all the time in sports. Right. And it's just one of those because he's hurt kind of thing, and he ha- he's, he's not used to the, I guess, the everyday struggle again. And he's 37 years old. Oh, he's 30, uh, 37, right? 38. 38. Recently turned yeah, 38. Yeah, he just turned 38. Uh, that whole body um, catching up to him, and that's really sad to see considering I started watching baseball, and one of the main reasons is because of Derek Jeter. Um, it, it's just one of those things. The Yankees are going to be the Yankees until proven elsewise. Yeah. And... Right now, I, I, I do have them winning a div- wild card at the beginning of the year. Um, but we'll get back into those a little later on. I still think they can find a way to do it, but they need the guys, that their horses, to come back. It's going to be interesting to see what horses. A-Rod brings to the table. Yes, it's going to be very interesting. And I saw on Twitter moments ago that the 
whole biogenesis thing is not really going to be taking sort until 2014. Right. So A Rod's safe in that, and he probably will be retired by the time that happens, knowing how many injuries and everything like that happen. So God only knows how. Like, not only his age, but like with all the injuries, how is he. Can he play third base every day? I don't think but he's. A, I don't he think he's going to be a third baseman he, every day. He's anymore. not, but he doesn't have to be. Yeah, but in that lineup, you have a guy like Travis Hafner, who who you want in the lineup, who's a power batter. You want in the lineup. He's going to bat bat the H. He doesn't really have a position. Uh, that's that's fair analogies, but who would you rather have playing, A Rod or Travis Hafner? Look at the baseball a- cars and A Rod recently, or Travis Hafner. No, I I understand where you're taking it, but you'd still would rather have A Rod play because you know A Rod could hit one out at any moment. I'm not saying Travis Hafner would not do that because obviously that'd be stupid of me to say that because we know that Travis is having a great year. Right? He's having a renaissance year to his standards after the last couple years not being so great, being in injured and basically so, hurt. Yeah, it's just one of those uh, weird things that the Yankees just. It really is that situation going on. Um, their pitching staff has been okay. Um, CC hasn't been great as of late, and it's kind of scary to see that he had his worst outing, uh, his last start on Sunday, giving up a lot of runs against the anemic uh, offense of the the Twins, and that's kind of scary to see. Um, f- you never know what you're gonna get out of Phil, Phil Hughes every night, and uh, more more times than not, Nova is gonna pitch okay. But he is susceptible to those shaky starts every now and then right. as well. Um, I forgot who said it, but every guy has... I think it was Al Leiter. I was watching a game. He was talking about Phil Hughes. And he said the best pitchers are the ones that realize you get five starts a month. You always got to look at it that way. You get five starts a month. So basically you get two starts where you need to pitch your A game. Yeah. Two starts where... You, you have to put your B game, and then you're going to have to realize there's going to be that one start that month that you're not going to have your your stuff. Yes. And if you could do that, you can consistently win three out of five games every month, and that's a, that's a good way to, to yeah. think about it as a pitcher. So if Phil, he was comparing, saying about Phil Hughes, the problem with him is that he has that rough – he has that bad stuff where he has – that game where he has no stuff – and then the next game, he still has no stuff because it's still in his head from the last game. It's a mental thing. You got to get the the bad games out of your head right away. It's like a hitter who plays every day. Absolutely. Yeah. And he he needs that. Nova is hit or miss. Andy Pettit has been good, but how long can he stay healthy with his age and everything like that? Corona has been okay. Um, he's been good for the most part. There's been some rough starts, but he's been hurt every now and then as well. It's just the Yankees. Age is really taking a hit this year. The uh, there's a little chink in the armor. Yeah, um, it's weird to see, and it's like it's you're starting to see that what they do is spend money and not care about it, their farm and it, system and it, because and it's starting to hurt because there's teams like the Rays and Orioles that are finally caught up to them in caliber of players, and they they look outmatched a lot of the games so far this year. Oh, it's, no question about it. And they are deservingly so, being the fourth place team. Um, at as of right now, um, the Ra- the Blue Jays could make a run for their money to maybe be out of the fir- fourth place title. They are looking to trade, um, get a few more trade bait for the trade deadline. So, God only knows what's going to happen with that at the All Star break. What What do you think the Yankees need to do? Um, what do you think the Yankees are going to have to do for the Yankees the, need uh, to get healthy? Half to, they second. need to get healthy. I think that a hundred percent Granderson. Yeah. 100% Jeter. Brandon is another one who should be coming back shortly as well. And I think that if A-Rod can be half the A-Rod he was. Yeah, the only thing they need is a half of A-Rod because they'll still have Robbie Cano and the other guys who fell off. But with them back, they're going to be being able to be slid, slid down to the bottom of the lineup. So they'll be able to manage games. And if they right. need a day off... They don't need to play every day. Just just think about this. On a healthy lineup. And each row is starting to heat up, so that's always good to see. Gardner's been great so far. Not great, but he's been good this year. But but think about this in a healthy lineup for that team. It's Gardner, each row, one and two, flip-flop, whichever way you want to do it. 
Well, yeah, when, or, once Jeter comes back. And then Jeter will, will probably be the two. Yeah. And then one of them, Gardner or Ichiro, will become the nine. Yeah. Then you have Granderson, who will probably be the three. Cano at the four. Right away. That, yep. That's a and tough then, little lineup to face. And then, and then you have A-Rod at five. And A-Rod, Hefner, and then... Lyle Overbay is a tough... Overbay not not an easy bat to get out most of the no. time. Uh, Vernon Wells, when he... He's he's not gonna bat. He's yeah. not gonna give you forty home runs, but he's gonna give you a decent numbers. Yeah, I mean the Yankee lineup can be a dangerous they, lineup. They could be very happen. dangerous. Um, and if they get the right pieces back, um, they can be very dangerous and try to make the playoffs like we all expect the Yankees to do. And a lot of people are stubborn and spoiled by that and thinking, oh, okay, the Yankees will turn it on. Um, the age is getting to them. Let, let's let's switch gears a little bit. Um. You think they're going to make the playoffs? My, I think I think they'll find a way with the injuries. It's uh, it doesn't look good at the moment, but I think they all could they could find a way to do it. They what? they have to overcome a lot. Okay, let me ask you this: What is your second half Yankee prediction? In terms of what record? In terms of overall. I think they're going to be a t- they're going to play until the final inning of the final game. We won't know what's going on until the final week of what standings lie. Um, it really, obviously, like we've mentioned, uh, it's been health this whole entire year, and that almost hit a cr- that almost made a critical moment of last night's All Star game when Cano got smacked in the middle of the knee by Matt Harvey. Granted, it was by accident, but that could have completely ended the Yankee season right there. Oh, once I saw him, and it was right smack. It was right. Hit him right in the kneecap. Yeah, right, right there. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah. you can't see it, but it was between the leg pit. Right, and that hurts. I, I, that hurts for Matt Harvey, ninety-five mile per hour fastball, right I, to the knee. I remember. And I texted you, "Ouch!" with three <laughs> O's. I'm like, that that hurts. And you knew the minute the minute he got hit that he was gonna walk to first, but he wasn't staying in the game because it was an exhibition game. Back when we were in like fourth or fifth grade, I forgot what the kid's name was. The kid had like a 55 to 60 mile an hour fastball in Little wow. League. Wow. And he hit me right on the inside yeah, of my knee. And the welt, and, yeah. And I and I was out for the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, it was like the fourth or fifth grade, but I was out the rest of the week after that because that hurts. Um, you don't never want to get hit in the knee. And the Mets doctors said <laughs> with the Mets doctors, I yeah, especially a, with the and the Red Sox doctor was the was the I, AL guy. I made a, I made a tweet. Uh, he he need, the Yankee doctors have to get to flushing ASAP. <laughs> the Mets doctors are taking care of him. When I heard that, I was like, oh no, he's done for the year. Um, Think about it. They had the Red Sox trainer in the American League and the Mets trainer in the National League. If you're a Yankee, you don't want help from either of them. Well, Boston would. <laughs> Be, obviously, they'll be fine. They're professionals, so that's it's that yeah, but it's also more, the Red Sox. Yankee. No, it'd be more of a media and fan fan base kind of thing to say that. But when it all comes down to it, they're just all professionals doing their job, so that would never be an issue. If there is, there's some serious problems going on, so that is what it is. I, I think it right now, I'm going out on a limb. Uh, I think they could find a way if all the healthy pieces, if, and that's a big key word, if. Um, if not, I would really, really love to see the Orioles. I, I, I want the Orioles to win the division, like I said last week. Um, they earned it this year. This year, they're just playing awesome. The top home run leader in both leagues this year in Chris Davis, and he's just smacking the ball all over the park, and it's it's been amazing to see. They have Manny Machado, who's a stud. Is and he eligible for Rookie of the Year? No. He lost. He got it out of last year, right? Yeah. He second place. Well, third place, I guess, because Cespedes was second place. Um, But he, Machado is just a stud. He's hitting doubles left and right, and he's just, just being awesome this year, and that's awesome to see out of a 20-year-old kid. And he's arguably number three on that. Who would you start your team after uh, with uh, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, and Manny Machado? He and, made one of the best plays I've ever seen in an All-Star game. So. Yeah, he made a couple of sick plays. And that's not his natural position. And that's what makes it amazing. He I, barely has played I third said base. to my dad that it was that he's like already being compared to Cal Ripken because yeah. natural shortstop moved to third base for the better of the team. Yeah. I mean, granted, it's not later in his career when he got moved over, 
but it's still pretty cool. By the way, before we continue, uh, interesting Mariano Rivera stat since we were talking Yankees. Sure. Nine innings in an all nine all star innings. Yep. Zero ERA. So uh, I should well, throw that out there. Just that was a, my dad tidbit. gave me that stat today. And that's just, an amazing tidbit. Um, it's it's uh, before we move on. Obviously, we started already, but we got to give our proper due to Mariano. Um, he's just simply the best closer ever. Yes, and also uh, check out on YouTube. Yeah. I was at the All Star Game. I got a great, uh, great video on there of the intro for him in the eighth inning. So if you want to check that out, it's that, on our that was page. a great ultimate moment and something I'll never the forget. The ultimate respect for the ultimate player. And and honestly, Mariano Rivera is the ultimate gentleman. Um, he, he, you can't hate him. Oh no, I he, I always tell people he, growing up. I was never a Yankee fan, but but there was always three those players. Fi- five. Yeah, okay. I had five. Yeah. Tino, Paul O'Neill, yep. uh, Pettit, Pettit yeah. Jeter, and Rivera. Yep. The core guys, pretty much. I, yeah. I had the same list. And and also, Sean, or my cousin Sean, the autograph ninja that he is, he, he got Mariano Rivera to sign his baseball, yeah, one of his baseballs. Shocking. And he is, honestly, the the best autograph I've ever seen. Um have signed during a mid uh, batting practice that I've ever seen Sean get. It was so nice and clean and clear. And then he knows that it's his last All-Star game and not a lot of people are able to get the opportunity to meet him. So kudos to Mariano. Obviously, he's not listening, but he is definitely <laughs> one of a kind. How do you know he's not listening? Well, I like the odds. <laughs> um, but I, I definitely give him, it's just awesome to see Mariano. He's definitely one of a kind. He could definitely still pitch till he's 50, but he just doesn't want to. And Bro, we know he is 50. It, he's just calling it up, and it, it's been such an amazing career. And when he does, when he has his human moments, it isn't like, wow, he got destroyed on that one pitch. It's nub, nub, nubblers, and you just got to tip your hat to him. Well, I, I said it to my dad. I said, you know how cool it would be to see him go save last night? And, um, <laughs> and uh, no... And I know this is um, 12 years ago, but I'll I'll never forget uh, after 9-11 um, with the whole scenario with the Twin Towers and everything like that. If the Yankees didn't win a certain game, I forget, uh, the plane crash that landed in Bell Harbor was going to back to Latin America. And one of his, him, a teammate of his would have made the plane if they didn't play a certain game. I don't the game. I, I I I I don't I I'm just basically telling the story, and he he just thanked God. He's very he's a very religious man, and he 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 was very happy. Thank God that just because they lost, they they would have uh, he would have lost the ultimate lost a teammate, and it's just one of those crazy things that he's just a he, nice human being, and it's real. It's really you don't see that every day in the. In the baseball world and uh, uh, sports in general, and we're we're going to be losing a great ambassador of the game. Yes, no question about it. Um, so back to back, back to, to the, sorry, we <laughs> I got we got completely sidetracked, but yes. Mariano deserves that. Um, so you're going to take the Orioles in the yes, I'm taking the Orioles winning the division. Keep in mind, you can find on our Facebook and Twitter our baseball preview show, which includes yeah. um our original. Selections for everything. Since we're quote unquote not ac- experts, we're able to switch it up and laugh at. There's our nothing on record right now. <laughs> yeah. So Baltimore, but you have the Yankees in a in a wild card spot. Yes, I'm. St- I'm still gonna stick with them, but it's a lot of ifs have to happen. Okay, I'm gonna skip now to the. What, what do you think? For the AL East, I think at the end of the day, that Tampa's pitching is gonna dominate that division. At the end, and they're going to win it, win the okay. division. Okay. And Baltimore's bats are going to end up getting them into the wild card. Into the wild card. Fair spot. enough. I I just have to be New York biased. That's why I'm I I understand. Hey, that's just my prediction. No, I know. And um, so now we're going to go to a tough division. And I and I don't I don't say I'm happy with my Yankee pick. <laughs> I'm no, I'm, I'm being honest, but I uh, someone has to pick the Yankees, so I'll be the one. So. We're, I'm going to switch us over to a tough division in the American League. Okay. Since there's an easy one and there's a tough one left. Yeah. Mm, gee. The AL West. AL West. 
Ah. I'll, I'll give you my prediction first, okay? I'll go first okay. for the AL West. Okay. I love Oakland. Mm-hmm. You, how can you not like Oakland if you're a natural baseball fan? I love, if it wasn't for not thinking Cespedes could actually win it, I probably would have actually picked him last week for the for the home run derby. Home run derby. Eh. Well, he, yeah, you didn't know he was in right, right. the last sub. So I'm actually going to give Oakland a wild card spot. Okay, that's very They're generous. my second wild card team. Okay. Because I think that they're just going to keep fighting. Mm-hmm. They basically have the same guys they had last year, and they know what they're doing. They're yeah, basically they're doing scrapping. what they did last year. Right. Division, I think that it's time that the Angels are going to flip that switch. They've slowly started getting into that. that. Hopefully Adam Rank's listening to the show because he would love that uh, protection. So I'm calling that the Angels are going to start going on that roll. Mm-hmm. Their pitching is going to start picking up. The hitting is going to come. Pujols is going to become Pujols again. Yeah. Hamilton's gonna. St- Hamilton's been hitting a little bit recently. Trout is still Mike Trout, and I think the Angels are gonna end up winning that division, just like I had. Okay, I think the Rangers are gonna win the division, uh, and I think uh, the Rangers winning the division. Yeah, I have the Rangers winning that division. Did I have that in the beginning of the year? Beginning of the year, you had. Hold on, Angels. I had the Angels. Okay. The Rangers were your wild card team. Okay. Uh. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it as is then because I think the Angels are gonna wake up. So you wait. So wait, are you flipping them or keeping them? I'm keeping them now, thinking the way it is. I think the Angels are gonna finally wake up. Their bats are too good. Um, it was just one of those they didn't have uh, the pet horses at the beginning of the year. They had a slow start. Now they're starting to pick up steam. They're one of those teams they put together the and prob- thought they would produce the right away, but is, didn't. The problem is I might have to change my mind and flip-flop because the way I look at it, let me get to the nice standing sheet. They're 11 games out of first place right now. So I changed my mind. Yeah, but mind there's a that. lot of baseball left. There's plenty of baseball left, but I, I'm going to stick with the. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to flip-flop them, and the Rangers are going to make the, the okay. win the division. Final answer, Dan. We'll keep Rangers. Up. Rangers are going to win the division. Ra- Rangers win the West. Angels win the wild card. Get the wa- other wild card spot. Yes, they all get the other wild card spot. It's just, I feel bad. I I hope Oakland proves me wrong, but the Rangers and the Angels have too much firepower. Oh yeah. And last year was one of those fluky things that happened. So I'm going to go with those two guys. Well, that's why I didn't pick the Rangers because I feel like they don't have bats to. Produce at the end of, at the end of the year. I feel like th- that Oakland's bats are going to end up taking that. Fair enough, but Oakland's bats are are eh, at best mostly this share. Other than home run derby, Aspidas has done nothing. Other than that, the A's definitely have the better pitching and pitching wins, but just from sheer power, uh, horses, those teams have it. So I'm going to go with those two teams. And then the most boring, di- well, not boring division, but the most logical. Well, I already put my team down, so. Okay, Tigers. We both <laughs> p- picked the Tigers, but I hope. In honor of Matt Martin, who I hope is listening, I picked the Tigers. So I'm so I'm helping out Adam Rank with the Angels and Matt Martin okay. with the Tigers. So. Matt Martin likes to the Tigers. Matt Martin's uh, a Tiger I, fan. I didn't know that. All right. Um, I I hope I hope right now it's a only one in a game. Half, well, half, one and a half games out of first place. The resurgent Cleveland Indians. Um, I would love to see them continue the battle with Detroit, but Detroit's just too good, and they're they're just they were just in cruise control until the All Star break. Now is when the Tigers are just gonna go and win the division. Um, Verlander hasn't been Verlander yet so far this season. Uh, Matt Scherzer has been a stud. He obviously since he did start the All Star game last night. Um, it's just. It's the Tigers division to win, and everybody the, knows that. And it really, it really, I hope the longer Cleveland stay, uh, keeps keeping it close, it, the better and awesome the race is going to be. You know how I saw it last night at the All Star game? Is Leland figured out that twice he's been in the World Series and they didn't have home field advantage yep. in it? <laughs> and it hurt him. Yeah. So he played to win last night. Yeah, pretty much. So, because he wants that home field advantage when it comes to. Okay, now we're going to do the AL awards. We're going to go through this real quickly. Okay. I'm going to give you who you had first. Okay. And we're going to go backwards on this. We're going to go batting title first. Okay. You had Melky. Mel, uh, Miguel Maybe. Cabrera. Okay, keeping. You're keeping Miguel Cabrera. Yep. Uh, Cabrera. 
Keep in mind, these will be up on our yeah. pages, of course. Um, manager, you had Buck Showalter. Keep it. Guru. Rookie of the year, you had Will Myers. Uh, keep it. Keep it? Yeah. Cy Young, you had? David Price. Price. Uh, nah, I'm going to change it because he was hurt this year, first half this season. Uh, I'm going to have to go with I have to go with uh, Matt Scherzer right now. Uh, that's the guy I was going to take. I know I can. Scherzer. And your MVP of the year was Mike Trout. <sighs> Chris Davis. Interesting one. I like it. And that's just the easy pick since he's leading the league and everything right now. You know you know what else was interesting? Him and Cabrera are the first two players ever with 30 and 90 at the All-Star break. Exactly. Like... <laughs> like that's just exactly. It, you just think about it that how many years of baseball there's been, and they're the first two guys ever. It's insane. It's absolutely ridiculous just to even think about it. Alrighty, my predictions were: batting title was Cabrera, which I'm gonna keep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, manager, I gave it to Joe Madden, which I'm gonna keep. The rookie of the year, I also had Will Myers, which I will keep. Yeah, he just got called up uh, not even a month ago. So, I think he could turn it on. He's had moments that he has definitely turned it on. So, I like it. Uh, I'm going Max Scherzer. I had Verlander. Okay. And then I had Fielder as the MVP. And I'm going to change it to Cabrera. Okay. So, those are my AL picks. Okay. Keep in mind, people, they will be up. So, you can hold us to these for our second half predictions. Yeah. Okay. League champion for the American League. Tigers. Much pitching and just the nasty lineup. I'm going to stick with my original pick and stay with the Angels. Been a fun league championship series. Though. That would definitely be a fun <laughs> series. A lot of firepower in that division, uh, that championship series. But just think if Verlander and and Scherzer are hot, and Weaver and and uh, C J Wilson are hot. The, the, yeah, <laughs> that that's scary. You're looking stuff. at three possible games in that series of those those four guys. It's. <laughs> it's very scary, and hopefully it pans out. That'd be a great series to watch. Um, so that's the American League. We're going to take a little break, go listen to a little more Division 1.1 with submission this week, and we'll be right back with the Mets and the National League. s and Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by Major League Baseball or any official <laughs> Welcome back to the S and D podcast. Dan here. I'm um, on the Sp- Schmuck Sports Radio, and we're gonna switch gears to the National League and more particularly the New York Metropolitans. We'll start off with the Mets. We'll start off with the. We Mets. will have the not have home field advantage for the first time in three yes, years National in the World League. Series. Yes. They forgot to hit. They completely forgot to hit, and American League sh- completely shut them down. Uh well, let's let's start with the Mets. Um. They're they're fourth place, which we expected. Uh, there's a lot of good and a lot of bad. Which way do you want to go for th- first? Hmm. Hmm. Let's talk the- about the bright side. Matt okay. Harvey. Matt Harvey. <laughs> uh, Matt Harvey. David Wright, and hopefully Zach Wheeler. All right. You know what? I'm gonna go with the whole unit, the whole pitching staff. The starting pitching staff has been absolutely amazing uh, so far this year. They're keeping us afloat. Um, in terms of being irrelevant in games. Uh, Matt Harvey's been in Matt Harvey, obviously, as everybody knows. He started the All-Star game. He's just been a stud. Um, it's only going to keep getting, hopefully, better and better as the years go on with Matt Harvey, and he gets some run support in the second half. Uh, then the next... Um, next guy I'm going to give the credit to is Jeremy Hefner. Jeremy Hefner completely turned yes. around his season, which is very great to see. Um, he's completely shut it down the last month and a half of just not letting anything buy him. And so is Dylan G. Um, not a lot of people have been giving Dylan G just as much credit as Jeremy Hefner, but he's been doing good. One of his losses was on a walk-off win on the bottom of the ninth, which he pitched his balls off, and it was great to see. Yes, that was amazing. Uh, the, our starting pitching has been really, really well. Even the players that we would think was well originally is the weak link of our rotation staff has actually been pitching pretty solid, and hopefully we get Jonathan Nice back from his injury. They haven't really discussed it because it's been a severe injury, 
But if he comes back, he can go back into the his rotation, and it's going to be hard uh, for whoever is going to lose that rotation spot. Yeah. Um, I think at the end of the day, really, when you look at the five that have the spots, it's going to be uh, it's Hefner, Wheeler, Harvey, G. And who's the fifth guy they have? Right now? Yeah. Uh, Harvey, Wheeler, G, G, Hefner, Hefner, Gonzalez. Uh, no, not it's, Gonzalez. It's no. been, it's been. Uh, what's his face? Markham's out. Torres. Torres. I think he's going to be the un- guy. Who yeah, but he pitched pretty well against. He the- did. He pitched well. Granted, they had him on account because he, yeah. he was basically a bullpen guy who yeah. haven't pitched, but he pitched well enough to, to keep it going. But I think that at the end of the day, he will suit better for the... Well, of course. He's going to be the bullpen guy. Um, Let's get to the... Oh, we also... The bullpen has been decent. Um, I think the biggest problem with Terry Collins is his overmanaging of the bullpen at times. And overworking guys because he doesn't trust certain guys in the bullpen, which is rightfully fair for the reasoning why those guys are slugging, uh, being a little sluggish at the halfway point of the season. Uh, but I'm very happy and proud of Bobby Parnell coming through this year on being the uh, being uh, being the closer and being able to shut the door more times than not. And that's really hard to see, for especially for someone who's actually given the rotation, I mean, the, the spot a couple of times. But it's because it was due to injury, not because, hey, Bobby Parnell, you're going to be our closer. You're going to be taking the ball in the ninth inning kind of thing. So I'm really proud of seeing how good Bobby's been so far when he's been called upon in a save situation. Yeah, he's been a bright side this year. Um, it's He's finally becoming... He's finally he's, becoming he's, his own. Right. And one guy they always say they should be, that we should thank for that is Jason Isernhauser, who taught yeah, him that absolutely. knuckle curveball. Um, so he he's becoming a bright side, which is going to be great. I was talking to a buddy of mine, and when you think about it down the line... If you can find that 7th and 8th inning guy. We need to get that 7th and 8th inning. But just think about this late in the year. Pennant race. Matt Harvey on the mound goes 8 innings. Bobby Parnell comes in and closes. Which is great. Mets win one nothing. We don't need the bullpen. But right. but you can't expect that every game out of everybody. Right, right. But as great as that would be. Especially in the postseason. Whoa, in a postseason yeah. run, that would be great as well. Um, another, another big move the Mets made in the first half. I thought they finally got a spark plug. Eric Young Jr. has we, done... We mentioned EY last week. Yeah, man. we did. And I just want to give him the credit again since we're no, doing absolutely. our laugh. And I want to see him keep up what he's been doing. Um, I think he could end up being the left fielder for the next couple of years. He's yeah. locked in. He is locked in for the next two years. So um, so we basically have him for now. Um, I want to see more production out of... We're, uh, we're, okay, we could start a whole whole <laughs> list of who we can we should expect more production out of. It's been pretty much the Dare Wright show and Marlon Bird. He's been the unsung hero so far this season. Unexpected uh, stud for the Mets lineup this year. And how much longer can you expect that to actually last? Right. I think they're going to end up keeping Bird all year and just letting him walk because Probably. you're That's not going to get much back in return for him. Last week I thought they were going to they should trade him, but at the end of the day you're probably right. But if we were able to get something out of it, it's better than nothing. If we were to get a good decent trade, I would definitely do it. Right. Um but as of right now, what happened with the Mets this year is what we can't say we expected. We said going into the season, there's a lot of ifs. If Ike Davis played well, if Lucas Duda played well, if Murph has done decent. Murph's having a little slumpier of a year, which wasn't expected. If Ruben Tejada progressed, if Jordani Valdespin actually played well and not got sent <laughs> up and down and just up He wasn't and down. sent up and down. His mind is going up and down. Well, yeah, but he finally got sent well, down. Well, he's the man now. Not anymore. <laughs> um, well, not after what he said to Collins. Yeah, he's a little sea sucker. Um, Thank you for keeping it family oriented <laughs> on our show. Of course, that's what I do. Uh, it, it their offense is just terrible. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Um, so well, that, well I just showed you the it. picture I found. Uh, just San San has been playing great, but how long is that gonna last? You, he's you talk about our manager. offense. You talk about our offense. I showed you that image, the yeah. bad luck Matt from yeah. uh, from MLB Memes. Uh, 
which is in the All-Star game, still gets no run support. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's other than David Wright and Marlon Bird, they're the only two that I can give them better B plus or better ratings. Everybody else has gotten a C or an F. Oh yeah, D and no F. question. And and that's really sad to see. And it's just one of those ah. If this team is able to swing the bat, our team would be decent and very ready to contend for a wild card spot. Because you can see the teams like the Giants, you see the teams like the Oakland A's, and other teams that have the solid pitching and the clutch situational batting, they get to win more times than not, and they have a shot of making the playoffs more times than not. Right. Agreed 100%. And that's what's frustrating being a Met fan right now. And uh, we know that we're not going to make the playoffs this year. But we are right there to just be like the Oakland A's to make, maybe make a crazy miracle run next year. Or even this year, even though that's not going to happen. I'm going to be realistic right now. <laughs> I know some people are flirting with the idea we're only X amount out of the wild card. But it is what it is. I just want the Mets to be competitive and being able to be watchable the rest of the season and them continuing to grow for next year when we're, quote-unquote, ready to be able to spend money on free agents and being able to start the official where finally want to contend and get wins and have our pitching staff be helped out by our offense. So that's going to be interesting to see. Um, I really hope for my view for the uh, second half – I really hope Matt Harvey continues to dominate as he's been this so far this season and maybe win a Cy Young. And that would be awesome to see back-to-back years that Met wins a Cy Young award. That would be awesome. And that and that's honestly that is honestly not far away. Um since now it's it, it, now wins are not completely the biggest uh reason why a pitcher's won Cy Young awards. It's more whip strikeouts and they've become more uh nicer to pitchers because pitching wins are come and go obviously as you can see matt harvey has nine no decisions and half of them and obviously that's not his fault but hopefully harvey continues his dominant ways and the mets continue to help him out and maybe he has a shot of winning the uh cy young that would be great to see a 24 year old do you know you know who else and i would hope to see wheeler progress and see the growth on how what a Harvey did last year, Harvey's uh, one year anniversary of coming up is quite. It's coming up soon, and looks like a week or two. It's it's coming up real soon, and it, it, he was great. Obviously, he's one of the rare scenarios that he was great out of the gate. Wheeler's been so Wheeler's been good some starts and shaky some starts, which you expect. But I'm expecting Har- uh, Wheeler to have a better better start to everything like that. Um. You know who else? And uh, and obviously and and just the uh, the young son guys that we're going to be calling up in September and everything like that. That guys could have viable roles coming into next year. Maybe a Kirk Newenhuis steps up to the plate, or a Langaris steps to the plate, and we might don't have to buy a pick up a center f- uh, fielder next year. That'd be nice to see. Maybe Ike actually wakes up like he did last year and hits a couple home runs and he gets his money's worth next year in free agency, not saying with the Mets, but with any team. I want to see Ike to do good. He he's he works way too hard for him to slump. And I just, I just they're they're a good team and a good team to root for. I just want need and want to see something them to do well, but they have to show it and prove it that they can be capable of doing it more times than not. Especially since we're going to be at City Field a lot more times than not because of our ticket plan. Um, one other thing, one other guy we don't give credit to, who's actually had a decent since called up, has been Omar Quintanilla. He's played very well. Mm-hmm. At first he was shaky coming up, of course, but then like as he progressed, which basically led to Ruben Tejada staying in Triple A. Yeah. Ruben hasn't earned his spot this year, and it's plain and simple, and Terry Collins has said that, and he's absolutely right. He wasn't earned. He he was great. He definitely earned his position from last year's stats, but this season is a completely brand new year, and he doesn't deserve his spot right now, and he has to earn it and earn his trust. Um, so basically, what do you want to see for the second half? Well, like I mentioned, the pitching staff continues to be well. Maybe we get a couple timely hits, and other than Marlon Bird and David Wright, 
other than those two guys, a little bit more production out of the offense. Is it a little too hard to ask? Uh, who knows? Yes. You're just asking for too much. <laughs> I know, but I'm really not, though. I want to see them fight and battle. Yeah, I, I want them to be entertaining for the rest of the season. Right. Worst so case scenario, for next, next season, week training camp starts. For season. next spring training to start, maybe we can contend for a wild card. Right. Depending on what we do in the off season, And that's all I want. That's that's all I want. It, it's going to be an interesting second half. Um, I'm excited for it. Um, but the way they've been playing and battling in games, I think they could be exciting. And I think the second half could be a lot of fun to watch. Especially if they do end up getting out of it. Or no... And Decker may come up. Guys in the guys we've been hearing Maybe about for Flores. a couple. Maybe Flores. Guys we've been hearing about. We may start seeing them, and they could be could end up being like the key, you know, to becoming something more. We we hope so. Right. Um. That's that's what we have to look forward to for Mets this rest of the off season. Um. Now with the All Star Game out of the way, it's just quiet. It's going to be a quiet time in the Mets organization and City Field. So. We're going to be taking the back seat again, and which is fine with me at least, because we're not going to be anything worthy of anything. All right, that's so that's what we feel about the Mets. Um, let's start with the round the league of the National League. Since division. we're in the division, since the division, so the cluster at the top of it, the cluster right now. Um, um, a week ago, I would have never thought it would have been a cluster because the Phillies weren't playing too well. No, they were not playing. Well. And then out of nowhere, they just flipped that switch and. I They're still, playing a lot better now. I still don't think they have enough at the end of the year when it's all comes said and done, Grant. Um, so let's see what we had originally. Uh, you had. Start off with you. I had the Braves. Did you have the Braves? I almost. You had the Nationals. Oh, I had the Nats. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the Nats. The Nats need to remember how we talked about the Angels that they can turn on that switch. Yes. Yeah, that's the Nationals as well. Um, Harper was hurt on the DL for a while, so their spot frog was hurt. Um, so that's part of the reason why they're they're not what they're supposed to be. They haven't had that sustainable hot streak yet, which they're really due for. So I think it's going to be them at the end of the day. The Braves are just underachieving this year. I don't know what the hell's gotten into them. At the beginning of the year, they were just red hot. And you thought they would be able to run away with the division. But they've really, 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 really... I don't know what's happened with the Upton brothers. They, they're they both on the milk cartons uh, missing. Um, After Ju- uh, Justin's hot opening month of the season, he's done absolutely nothing. And remember how we said that he would have to do what he... Do absolutely nothing to make the All-Star team in the beginning of the year? Yeah. He did. He absolutely <laughs> he did, did nothing. Like- to earn it. He had a layup to make the All-Star team at the beginning of the year. And he absolutely just crapped the bed so far. And if I was an Atlanta Brave fan, I would be very upset right now with our outfield. That outfield should be one of the, if not the best, one of the best outfields in the whole entire league. And they haven't shown it at all this year. Um, uh, I'm going I'm to say Nationals because I, I actually like watching the Nationals play. Their right. pitching staff's just nastier than the Braves. But the Braves, the way they've been playing, they should have been able to take run away with the division at the early stage of this season. And they completely failed and kept these teams in it. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Nat, Nats gonna wake up and finally wake up. So you're gonna take, take the, the Nats are gonna be the only NL East team in the playoffs? As of right now, yes. Okay. Don't I'm gonna give I think the Braves are gonna pick it up. They better pick it up with the payroll that they spend this year. I think they're going to end up turning it around, and they're going to pick it up. And I feel that the Nats are going to also turn it around, and they're going to make a wild card. The Nats are going to be my prediction to be that team that gets hot late in the year. Yeah, that's why. And I then have goes the, on the playoff that's run. That's why I have the winning the division. And goes on the playoff run. Uh, the rest of the NL is interesting. What division you want to do first? We could do the West. And go West. Okay. Well, we both had the San Francisco Giants. Okay. So, I'm going to take the Giants out. There are two teams at the top of that division right now, one of which is very hot and one of which is kind of struggling. But I think we'll be okay at the end of the year, but not make the playoffs. Right now, the D-backs, I believe, are winning that divi- or leading that division. They are by two and a half games against the Dodgers. The Dodgers are the hottest team in, in the sport. Oh. And I think that the Dodgers are going to end up, with all the money they've spent, they're finally going to... Wake up. 
and Plague Mania has taken over L.A. and everything else. So is it me or they always have that one guy with Mania? Yeah. For, well, Fernando. Yeah. What was it? Fernan- Venezuela. Yeah, Fernando. Uh, Fernando. Yeah, I know the Venezuelan guy. Yeah. And then they had Manny. Yeah. And now this guy. Yeah, that's just their word. <laughs> uh I I originally had the Dodgers winning the division. No, I had the Giants. I apologize. Yes. I think you had the Dodgers making the playoffs as a wild card. Okay. I'm going to have the Dodgers winning the division. They're just on that roll since the beginning of the year, and they have just too much firepower on the offense not to make the playoffs. They finally woke up, and now all systems go with that team. With Clayton Kershaw and other pitchers ready to go, they're, they're just ready to implode. And I think the Diamondbacks are going to get get one of the wild card spots. Actually, no, I lied. Wild card spots are going to be one in the the central I think three teams are going to make the playoffs in the Central. Interesting. So, uh, right now the Dodgers are going to make the playoffs in my book. Okay. So I have I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Dodgers also. Yeah. Uh, the Central is going to be interesting. I personally love what the Pittsburgh Pirates are yes, doing. Yes, and it's been over 20 years for them since they've been over 500. So right. I think they're going to end up over I'm, 500, I'm but not making I'm it. I'm 100 percent on their bad wagon this year. Um. I think the Cardinals have been just one of the best teams in the whole whole league, so I still stick with them winning the division. And I think the Cincinnati Reds are going to finally wake up as well and make a wild card, and the Pirates are actually going to find a way to make the playoffs this year, I think. Is the other wild card? Yes. Well, I'm um, gonna... Who did I have winning the division? The Cardinals? You? Or had the Reds? I, I might have been crazy and picked the Reds. You had the Reds? The Cardinals are making the wild card. Okay, so I'm flip flopping that. Okay, I think that Reds are going to end up winning that division. I just love that, that that team. It's just like I just think it's they're ready to win that division. Um, and I think that the Cardinals are going to end up being the wild card team. Um, I don't. At the end of the day, I just think Pittsburgh's just going to run out of gas. I think they're still. I think they're hot now. Just like it's been the yeah, past couple of years. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna get hot as the season goes on, and the dog days are summer. They're just playing it right. They know how to get, make it to the playoffs, and they've been to the playoffs the last few years. So I think they're gonna be poised to make a playoff run like they always do the last couple of years. It's just one of those tough divisions, and I think those three teams are better than any of the second place teams, even the third place teams in the National League. So I think it's gonna be American League, uh, National League Central that carries the two wild cards this year okay um okay so let's go with titles let's go with first league champion what who do you have as the nl champion the nl champion i had the reds surprising the world you think you think it's gonna stay that way uh i know who you had i'm asking what you have now no i know who uh i'm gonna say the cardinals are gonna find a way like every year to be in the mix, and I think they're going to find a way to make it to the World Series. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to go backwards again, the awards. Okay. We're going to start with the batting title. Okay. Who did I have? You Matt had Kemp. Matt Kemp. That ain't happening. Uh, Who was reading the NL inning? It was uh, Seguero is playing really awesome as of late with the NL. Hold on. Let me get that. Do, 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 do. It's Sorry. been Yadi Molina has been the uh, batting title right now with leading the league <laughs> in 341. And uh, of Cra- and Craig as well, Dyer. L- G. Seguero with 325. Buster Posey with 325 as well. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be Buster Posey. You're going to put Posey as the batting yeah, title. Yeah, but he is a couple batters behind. But I, I still find the way he's going to make it. I think that Michael Kadire has a advantage because of where he plays. And they're going to end up keeping him. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually going to give it to David Wright's good buddy and okay. let the let the Pittsburgh fans I boo me. I think Buster's going to repeat. The Pittsburgh fans boo me for taking Michael Kadire. <laughs> All righty. Manager of the year. I'll go first. I put David Johnson. Okay. Originally, but I'm going to change it to Don Manningly. Okay. Just remember a month ago. Those fire man. He was fired. Yeah. Who, did, who did I have? You had Mike McCarthy. Okay. I'm going to stick with him. Cause he's or whatever his name is. Uh, guy Matheny. from uh, Matheny. 
Athena, yeah, the Cardinals. Alrighty, rookie of the year is going to be a tough one. Both have guys who have not played one major league baseball game yet. <laughs> Originally, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Puig. So okay, so we're both gonna go with Puig because he's just been ridiculous and he's just been a p- very passionate. And I like his fire, so I'm gonna go with Puig. I'm gonna go with Puig as well. Uh, completely turn that team around. Cy Young's gonna be interesting. I I kind of have a feel of where you're gonna go with All it. Right. Yeah. You had Matt Cain. I had Matt Cain. The one year I had Matt Cain in my fantasy teams, and you see what happened. So I'm definitely changing my uh, prediction. I am going Homer pick, and I'm going to say Matt Harvey. Okay. I'm going to keep my pick. I had Clayton Kershaw. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. But but I, I give you credit for your pick. I just think that at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I think Kershaw is, uh, could win it as well. I'm just going with the Homer pick, and... Just how awesome he's been so far this season. So I'm just going to go with Harvey and stick with the hot hand. Okay. Now this one, uh, I bet K- you you Kershaw, are. Kershaw is definitely going to have more wins than Harvey, though. Okay. I'm putting that down. I'm going to go MVP first because okay. you're going to change yours no matter what. Yeah. Uh, I had Bryce Harper winning it. Okay. And I'm actually going to stick with Harper. Okay, fair enough. If he has a ridiculous second half, he yeah. can absolutely win it. I had I had Cargo. Cargo. Which, at the time, I thought he was going to have a good... Um, he's still an awesome player, and he might get traded, so I don't know. But I'm going to I'm gonna unfortunately change mine. <laughs> um, it's tough to see with the American National League. It's just one of those leagues that it's more of a cluster. There's no one player There's sticking out. There's not one player, but I'm going to go with Joey Votto. He's going to wake up and just start raking again. He's been a quiet, so he's been quiet this year, but he's still being awesome. So I'm going to go with Dark Horse, and Joey Votto is going to win me up at, uh, MVP. Okay. All righty. So that's our National League. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We're going to go play some more submission by Division 1.1, and we're going to be back with Darren from 7-Line. And later, during our, our ending tonight, we're going to give our World Series predictions. Since we have the team set, we'll give our World Series predictions later on. So let's go play a little more Division 1.1, and we'll be right back. S&D Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by Major League Baseball or any of its affiliates. And welcome back to the S&D Podcast show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Steven and Dan are here. Uh, we would like to welcome now Darren from the 7-Line. Welcome back, Darren. Welcome back. Hey, guys. Thanks, thanks for having me again. No problem. Um, so as everybody knows, this past weekend uh, at City Field and the Javits Center in the city was the MLB All-Star Game. Uh, let's just quickly get your view on your whole experience of the weekend, Darren. Were you able to – you attended everything, right? Yeah, I pretty much nonstop from, from Saturday on. I believe something was going on on Friday, but I had to miss that. So, um, yeah, I went to the Javits Center on Saturday for the uh, Fan Fest. I'm not like – Super big on um, like autographs and memorabilia, like collecting or anything. But I tried to soak everything in, check everything out, see the exhibits. Um, I was really interested in the. Um, there was an artist there that was actually just showing off a lot of his work, but they were way out of my price range. Everything was pretty much over a thousand dollars, but um, that was really cool to see. And I was also watching some of the wheelchair softball game, which was awesome. Um, it was great. I had a fun time. Cool. Um, all right. So yeah, I was the only one who didn't get to go to any events. Sad face right here. <laughs> um, you went to absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You could have showed up on Sunday and got in for pretty much nothing. I yeah, yeah. went away this weekend. <laughs> I'm, Dude, when they when they plan the All Star game, you have to clear your schedule. That, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. It was one of those awkward uh, girlfriend planned the whole vacation. And yeah, uh, sorry, that's sorry for, for a pickup, man. Yeah, and then I completely forgot the dates. And I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. And then I look at the dates, and I'm like, damn it. Yeah, but, you know, you got to put your foot down sometimes, man. <laughs> no, I know. I feel on that So, <laughs> the thing that you make all those T-shirts and seven line, how cool was it to see? I mean, I saw them every every time I turned around, another person was wearing Well, one watching shirt. the Home Run Derby, uh, since I was the only one not watching it live, uh it was awesome seeing your shirts every time someone hit a jack. There was a couple couple of them. Um, actually, Deadspin um, had a couple of gifts 
uh, one of the crazy, one of the bombs, and it was uh, actually Steve's wearing the shirt right now, uh, the Mike Piazza retired shirt. Oh, uh, you know what? I watched. I saw. I was watching the replays. I saw that that clip. That was awesome. Yeah, that was one of the shirts, um, and a bunch of other shirts throughout the whole home run derby, obviously, and throughout the night. And he actually gave away. Um, I know every everybody who's listening. He he is very Facebook, I, Instagram Darren friendly. Is. Yeah, he he had giveaways for the twentieth person he saw. So that's pretty awesome. Just seeing twenty people each night with his shirt. I'm sure he saw hundreds. Yeah, how did that yeah, feel? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, basically, um, my fiance Kelly, since the brand has started, whenever we're at the stadium, she just likes to like pretty much play a game like with herself, pretty much walking around and counting how many shirts she sees, and the numbers were you know, they're doubling and they're pretty much every section we look in, there's someone wearing a shirt. And if we stop and just let people walk past us for a little bit, you know, the numbers just keep, keep growing. So on Sunday, we were walking through the Caesars club trying to cool off a little bit. And there was a guy drinking a beer at the bar and he was number 30 that day. So Kelly goes, Hey, you're the 30th person today wearing a shirt. And he goes, cool, what do I win? And we were thinking, like, shit, nothing. Like, we can give you a high five and a thanks, but we, there's nothing we can give you, you know? So that kind of turned into um, something that I hope to do daily besides when we do an event because, obviously, that's when there's, like, 800 shirts. But um, we're going to pretty much scour the, scour the stadium, and the 20th person we see per day gets a $20 gift card for the website. So... Um, we did that two time, two days so far for the home run derby and last night, and uh, they seem pretty grateful for it, and that's pretty cool. Like you know, you wear a shirt to the game, and you might win something, so that's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It's getting funny to the point. Um, my last game was Wheeler's first game at City Field, mm-hmm. you know, a big debacle. But we yeah. uh, were walking around because the game was such a big debacle, and I walked by you. And, I wasn't trying to be rude not to say but you were just ganged by everybody. <laughs> it's getting to that point. It's just so funny. Everybody's like, oh, it's Darren. Darren, what's up? I love your shit kind of thing. It's really awesome to see you just nodding your head like, oh, yes, yes, this is awesome. Thank you. Well, I try to, you know, I don't want to ever not give someone, you know, a minute or so. You know, if, if they want to chat, why not? Why, why can't we just sit around and watch baseball and have a beer and talk? You know, that's what – part of uh, the community of its fan base has kind of turned into, at least for me, with the, with the brand. And um, I'm just really grateful to see it, and it's a really great feeling. And, and the connection that you get kind of when you see someone else wearing a shirt and you walk by and you kind of nod your head and, you know, give someone a high five, it's like you're in the, you're in the crew, you know? Like, if you know about the Seven Line, you're kind of in the same boat. And um, not saying that we're better fans than anybody else, but if you're – if you're one of us, you're in the seven line army, and it's kind of what brings us together, which is kind of weird because you know everyone owns a T-shirt of some sort, and it just matters that this one's blue and orange and has to do with Mets fans. So it's pretty. It's a for me personally, it's a great feeling. Oh, let's cut to the chase. We are the best fans in the world. <laughs> hey, let's cut the chase, except for those couple of people in the Matt Harvey video that embarrassed themselves. Yeah, that was I, funny. I hope they got paid because <laughs> some of them were like. One dude was wearing a Matt Harvey shirt jersey, and he's like, oh, "You're Matt Harvey." <laughs> well, you know, when you see someone out of their out of their element, it's kind of, um, you know, some people associate a player or you know whoever, whether it be a player or a celebrity or whatever. You don't picture, you know, you don't picture them in street clothes sometimes, and it's especially when someone's standing in a park holding a microphone with their hair done and like a, a t-shirt or whatever he was wearing. You don't really instantly think that's Matt Harvey, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I, like I, to us, to us, if we see somebody, it's like you with the Giants and me with the Islanders. If you're walking around, you see one of the players. You're gonna know who they are. It's just the way you. Are. Right. But, and, but like, I mean, also for the for the majority of you know people who watch sports, Harvey's only been up for a year now. So unless you're a super diehard Mets fan and you know you've been paying attention as much as we have, you might not recognize him. You know, and also. Let's say someone that we we're we're very familiar with. Let's say um, I don't know who else on the team is known, but not really like a Valdespin or something like that. If he was on the train wearing just regular street clothes, not wearing Met stuff, would you definitely recognize him instantly right off the bat? Like I'm not sure, you know. So I'm a weirdo, so I am. 
It depends. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Not everybody would, you know. So, like, I got bashed at the end of the at the end of the uh, home run derby. I was making a joke saying that you know some guy that nobody knows won the home run derby, and I wasn't saying like nobody really knows him, but the majority of the population oh, wouldn't, wouldn't know who he is, you know. Um, especially if you're a National League fan on the East Coast. If David Wright wins and you're not a baseball fan, you know who David Wright is, you know? So that's, that's pretty much what I was getting at, but people didn't really understand. Like this morning, my girlfriend, she goes, Matt Harvey didn't really pitch well. She's a Yankee fan, so she had to bust the little balls because yeah. I got really excited, obviously, because Harvey did awesome. Yeah. She's like, Harvey did okay. And I'm like, did you see their lineup? And I'm <laughs> like, that... Uh, he just got luck. He it was awesome that he got out of that inning without getting damaged badly. Yeah, of course. The the first two guys on no out still got out of it and struck three dudes out in two innings. That's not bad. <laughs> I mean, that was my one thing. I thank God my Yankee friends did not text me right after that pitch. I was very thankful with that. Yeah, you know what? The only the only gripe I had about last night, um, from being at the stadium so much, you know. You know pretty much which scoreboards tell you what information and and whatnot. But I was sitting actually in, in the outfield to the left of the of the apple, and above us was um, like the left field landing is what they call. So we couldn't see the main scoreboard with the lineups behind us because it just obstructed our view. But normally, down the right field and left field line, there's like a um, I don't know one strip of scoreboard, not scoreboard, whatever, like. Um, LED, whatever, and that says who the pitcher is, what his pitch count is, and how fast the pitchers are. And since they were changing pitchers frequently, I didn't even know, you know, right off the bat who was pitching because that was it would only tell you who the batter was. So that's the kind of only confusing part that I had um, as far as a mix-up from their normal graphics to last night. That's I didn't really like that. But um, if you're sitting anywhere else, you wouldn't have had a problem. But from where I was, I couldn't really see everything. So. But other than that, it was pretty good. I retweeted one of his tweets, which I was kind of upset about. Um, the free Wi-Fi. I go to all these games, never yeah, Wi-Fi. They never, they never offer free Wi-Fi. At major major league league Baseball, awesome. All-Star Game, free Wi-Fi. And I saw that tweet. I was like, son of Well, if you looked at, you know, next time you go, um, you know, like I said, from where I was, above us, we had an awning. So each section now has its own, like, router, its own yeah. wireless router, which is pretty cool. So... Oh. And it was really, really fast. Also, it wasn't. It was no. There was no delay. Like uh, my buddy pressed, you know, like on Instagram, and I saw it instantly. So it's like it's really on point. So hopefully that's something that sticks around. You know. Well, that's like at the Coliseum, they have the optimal Wi-Fi, but there's probably like one router. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it's sold out, there's sucks. sixteen thousand people using this Wi-Fi at the same yeah. time in this one spot. Well, for this, it was each section, which was yeah. really sweet. So that was good. So. So out of the whole weekend, what was like? I it, to me personally, going to the three events: Sunday, the Futures Day, uh, Monday the Derby, and then the game itself. To me, it was one of those like, okay, now I've officially said I've been to a uh, all the All Star events. Yeah, I don't have to. Um, I mean, the only thing that could have been better would be the temperature. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, it's no secret here. If, if you're listening to this and you're on the East Coast, it's been brutally hot. So. Um, the combination between that, a packed stadium, um, delayed trains and no breeze at the stadium, it was kind of brutal at points, but, um, as far as what stood out the most for me, like I, I didn't really watch that much of the future game after the first inning and, you know, Syndergaard was out, I wasn't as glued to the game, but I was kind of just walking around socializing with my friends and, and, you know, taking in the sights. But for Sunday's, um, highlight for me, it's probably two would actually be in the celebrity game. I just I loved hearing Mike Piazza, Mike Piazza's name come through the speakers and him oh, yeah. in the batter's box. Whether and obviously it was a game that meant absolutely nothing, but just seeing him swing and be there and play, that's pretty cool. And then also uh, I, I I never got his name, but um, the wounded warrior but he had no legs and oh, he had yeah, all yeah. That that was awesome. When uh, That was that was really really cool. And uh, when, uh, when he made that went for that diving catch also, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he was on point. He was playing that game like you know, like it was the World Series, which is great. You know, that's a, probably a great feeling for him. And um, another moment for Monday for me, which if you were home, you didn't see this. They had two high school guys come. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, they, were, they mentioned it. 
they actually- yeah, they had. Um, I mean, they weren't using wooden bats, but who cares? They're 17 years old. I wouldn't even have the balls to stand out there on and wave to people. <laughs> um, and this guy's in the batter's box, you know, hitting home runs, which was really, really cool. And what but, you know, once- deck. Yeah, Evan Roberts just tweeted that out on, on <laughs> yeah. Monday. Yeah, I mean, once once Wright was out, I wasn't really as um, as excited for it. I was even saying that yesterday to a buddy, like. If Harvey wasn't starting and Wright wasn't in the game, would you be as excited for the All Star game? And the answer would probably be no. You know, so they made the right call to have Harvey start the game, um, especially being in New York and a lot of the Mets fans that were in attendance. That you know, it meant something more to them, which is great. It, it's not not that he wasn't deserving of it; it just meant more for us to watch it rather than just some random guy that we don't care about. You know, right? Of course. Um, being a Mets fan, uh, one last question for you before we let you go, there. Well, um, Mets related. No, it's not really Met related. But okay. what was your feel on the Rivera? What they did for Rivera? I thought it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Um, I loved it. I mean, I, I wasn't against it. You know, I actually had more of a problem when they did the whole thing throwing out the first pitch during the regular season right. because that, that was a real Mets game. You know, like this this last night, MLB rented City Field. It wasn't a Mets game. You know what I mean? So for me, I actually had no problem with it. Um, I personally had more of a gripe with him getting the MVP um, at that point. Like, no pitcher gave up a run. You know, it wasn't – like, he had a great inning. I don't know if it was one, two, three, but – Yeah, it was one, two, three. Yeah, but either way, I mean, that's great for his – you know, when you put it into perspective, it's more like, all right, it's great for his age and his longevity, and it's great for the sport, yada, 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 whatever. But I think that there was other moments in the game – um, that may have been more of importance, kind of like scoring a run. Um, because it's not like the, the National League scored any runs the whole game. So it's, it wasn't really an MVP outing in my eyes, but whatever. I don't really care. It's, you know, it's a glorified exhibition and uh, whatever. I have no problem with it. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought that they dragged it out a little bit, like when he was out there on the mound warming up by himself. I yeah. feel like if I him, I would have just like – motion to the guys to like hey take the field you know because that was like a minute or so i feel like that would be really awkward right but it was still pretty cool um it's like, it, was, it was cool like me and my dad were just standing there and it's just like we just went from seeing one of the greatest new york pitchers and tom siever throughout the first pitch yeah to the guy who they think could end up becoming one of if not the greatest starting pitcher in new york and harvey possibly right. one day to then seeing the greatest closer of all time. No, it was great. I mean, it was a cool moment. And I, I, I tweeted it last night. Like, I have no problem. I have no problem with that. Like, as, a, as big of a Met fan I, as I am. And, you know, City Field's our new home. It wasn't, you know, like I said, it wasn't a Mets game. So I have no problem with that. But, um, you know, it, it, the only people who might have any kind of uh, bad thing to say about Mo is just bitter. Because how could you, you know? Ever, anyone would love to have him on your team. Right. Uh, just so everybody knows, if you want to check out our our S and D podcast YouTube page, I actually took a video. I was in section five fifteen, the third to last row, so I was able to get a nice clear shot from behind home plate of the Rivera entrance. So if anybody wants to check that out, that is over on YouTube. Darren, we would like to thank you for joining us. Also, before we got Darren leaving, um, Darren, any uh, quick plugs for the Seven Line? Any events or anything coming up shortly? Well, I don't know when is this if, if this is going to air tomorrow, which yeah. might be Thursday. Yeah. Well, tomorrow, <laughs> Friday, we're going to have our next outing at City Field. We have about 500 fans coming out for the Mets versus Phillies with the Nas concert afterwards, and um, it's supposed to be brutally hot, but that should be a good time. Oof. And um, after that, on August 11th, we're bringing two chartered buses from Queens out to the Bordy Barn in Hampton Bays. Wow. Um, that didn't go on sale yet, but it will be shortly. Um, we're just working out the charter situation. But if you've never heard of the Bordy Barn, Google it. It's the craziest time you'll ever have on a Sunday, hands down. And it can't be much better than going with 100 Mets fans. So that'll be a good time. All right, one last thing. I'm sorry. I have to bring it up. No problem. When's the Harvey shirt coming out? Come on. <laughs> I'm um, you know what? I was actually talking with him uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And I just wanted to go over the details before I put it out there. So, you know, he gave his blessing. He said he liked it. And, um, you know, I'm going to do it shortly. It just, we 
have a lot of other stuff going on. So before I get ahead of myself, I want to make sure that it's um, it's good to go and I can produce and come through on the orders. So right. I promise within a week or so there will be more details on it. I'm holding okay. you to that. And the yeah. and remember, we're, remember when it's 100 degrees outside for us, he's in the warehouse. And I, it's know, like 200 I know, I know. Dude, today was 107 in the warehouse. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. We have a wireless thermometer, uh, you know, thermometer to check it out it was it was brutal with all that money you can't get ac yet <laughs> no you can't man you can't you can't run air conditioning in a screen printing shop well that's it's just not it's stupid it would, it would just can completely counterbalance itself well, the dryers the dryers are set to 360 degrees well that's if, my you're, if your ac is on it would do nothing to that well that's my learning how to make sure it's 101 and i just failed miserably <laughs> dude you know what you could do you could email me like the rest of the people i get emails at least once or twice a day from someone saying like the the one sentence question how can you can you teach me how to make t-shirts <laughs> it's impossible you can't learn through an email <laughs> professor darren and i'm not being a, like, seriously i'm not being a, a prick for that my reply so listen you can't learn by asking someone who knows how to do this for 15 years you know the best the, the best tool that i didn't have back then when i was first learning is youtube Go on YouTube, search screen printing, search how to make a T-shirt, go on Vine, go on wherever, read a book, and uh, trial and error, and you'll learn. It just takes a long time. So if anyone's listening to this and they're interested in T-shirts, first learn graphic design, learn your programs, sit there for hours and hours and hours until you're comfortable learning how to make graphics, buy a really cheap kit on ebay or craigslist and get your hands dirty that's the only way you're gonna learn that's how we did the podcast yep just that's it done. just gotta learn once again that's it. Aaron, thank you very much for joining us tonight let's go mets there let's go mets no problem yo strong second half guys i'll see you soon s and podcast is in no way affiliated with associated with produced or endorsed by major league baseball or any of the And welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Uh, once again, shout out to Darren. Thank uh, you, Darren. Thanks, Darren. Great interview by Darren. Um, also, we just posted, um, or check out our Instagram page, at S&D underscore podcast. Um, uh, Seven Line Army member, Michelle, uh, had this awesome picture from the Shea Bridge. You know, her, her and her friend Erica were hanging out there all weekend at the All-Star Festivities of the of the American flag on the field with the players. So we posted her photo. Thank you, Michelle, for letting us use it. Uh, it's a great shot. It's one, it's like a panorama. You basically see yeah. everything at City Field in it. Which is pretty awesome. So that's a pretty cool photo. So shout out to her for that. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, we since we, we heard Darren's uh, initial reaction to the All-Star weekend, um, we didn't really get to say ours in the segment. So, Steve, uh, real quick, what did you think of the All-Star game? Uh, let, me, no, let me start, since I was the only one not at the event. First off, from the TV aspect, City Field looked awesome from every aspect of it. The Mets did a great job. The Mets fans did a phenomenal job. I was just very upset I didn't get to make any of the events, but I was there in spirit. And it looked like a fun time, and it was definitely worth to remember for people being there. The home der- home run derby was my favorite part of the week. It was just crazy seeing home runs being hit in ridiculous paces, places in City Field that you would never expect. And they we hit it all in the head. Le- if you listened to last week's show, we said, where do we want home runs to be hit? They hit every spot we wanted. At one point, it was first round by the time Steve's wishes were done. Yeah. The first pitch. First pitch. He He's like, oh, that was it. Uh, back of the pe- Pepsi porch, which he called. So it was amazing to see people hitting the third deck in the 500s in uh, left field. And you don't see that and since we sit there a lot. Well, we have tickets for there. doesn't mean we sit there. Right. At least. Um, I know I've, most I've never seen a ball hit the third deck. No. And that, ju- that was just bombs by Cespedes and everything like that. Um, of course, the first inning of Matt Harvey, him getting out of the first inning uh, was just relief, thank God, because it could have gotten a lot uglier after giving up a leadoff double to Mike Trout and hitting Robinson Cano. And just how ridiculous that American League lineup was last night that he was able to 
have two innings unscathed and nothing to his record in the ERAs. So that was great to see. And also, how can I not forget Mariano Rivera? The great way to send him goodbye with the um, whole baseball world watching in a, in an all star setting. So that was just my over, overall thing. It was great. Um, concerts were okay. Um, the American flag, uh, the national anthem was great. It was great to see Tom Seaver throw out the first pitch. We yes, and Piazza and home run derby. Yeah, it was. Um, we could have done without Pitbull, and we could have definitely done without uh, Neil Diamond. But everything else was... Neil Diamond was kind of cool. It was cool because the crowd got into it, but eh, it is what it is. What What do you think in the All-Star game? Because you were there. It was an awesome experience. Uh, like I said in, in the interview with Darren, mm-hmm. it was one of those like, okay, I, I've been to all the events now. Yeah. Now I can say I've done it. Done. I don't have to do it again. Mm-hmm. Maybe if it comes back, I would consider Obviously. it. Obviously. Of course. But now that I've done it once, I can say, I all right, it was a cool experience. Yeah. I mean, the game itself was just like in any other baseball game to me. It's just being there. The only difference was it was all those guys instead of just two actual teams. I thought that was one of the coolest parts was, I was talking to our friends while we were walking in that when you go to a baseball game, it's usually fans of the home team and fans of the away team. You got fans of 30 Major League Baseball teams in one place last night at the All-Star, at the game what, itself. And that's what was amazing about it. And it was all baseball fans unite. That was the one crazy thing about uh, social media nowadays. A fan that ran on the field. Yeah, that he had the fit. thousand. Because he... Uh, because he... He had twenty a thousand retweets. Right. Um, it's just amazing to see how social media works these days. <laughs> Deadspin had that whole his whole twi- Twitter feed before he ran on the field. Yeah, in a matter of ten minutes. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a, it's amazing how they had that ready to go in ten minutes and just to be able to share it to the whole world. It's crazy. It's just absolutely alarming and crazy to think about it. But I I, I got a good laugh at it while watching the game at home, and it's just one of those wow, that's crazy that. They planned it that much. And it was a nice tackle, by the way, by the security yes. guards. Nice well, they, form they, tackle. They have great ta- – they're good tacklers. <laughs> they're nice, great form tackle. Um, the NFL should uh, – the judge should give him a call on the middle <laughs> linebacker. It was a nice form tackle, and and he just took a beating. Um, <laughs> All righty. Before we wrap this up, once again, thank you to Darren. Once again, for thanks to us. Darren. Um, thank- everybody's support right now. Yes, Appreciate also it. thank you to Michelle again. Of course, again. check on 7 and all the recent events that Darren said. Unfortunately, it's too late to buy tickets for the Nas concert after the game on. Buy a regular ticket and hang out with yeah. them. Honestly, that's yeah. all you got to do. Buy a regular, yeah, buy a cheap ticket and much. hang out with them. Um, and the Broadway Barn in a few weeks. Uh, if you have nothing going on that day, might check as well out. check, uh, look it up and spend an awesome time. Why, why not with a bunch of Met fans? And there's buses, so there's no excuses, and you can get drunk. And there's, there's your DD. There's buses, so. As long as you're over the age of 20. Of course, of course. <laughs> so, and drink responsibly. Of yes. Course. So before we go, we did not do our World Series predictions. Okay. Now, you had, out of the American League, the Angels and the National League. No, no, League. I had the Tigers. No, you had the Angels. You took the Angels winning. Eh. No, I didn't. I, I had, had Tigers. the Tigers. I, I had the Tigers, too. There's no way I picked the Angels. I definitely have the Tigers. All righty. So if you're listening to the end of our show... Yeah, you can rip on him if you listen back. Or rip on whichever yeah. one of us forgot which. Yeah, one I picked. definitely had the Tigers. So, okay, so you have the Tigers, Tigers in the American League, and the Cardinals in the National League. Who's winning the World Series? Going with Tigers. Rematch of '06, huh? Yes. You're gonna go Tigers. But the Tigers win this time. So, I had the Nationals and the Tigers. I'm gonna say the Nationals are gonna win the World Series. Okay. Remember, these will be up on our Twitter and Facebook page. If we can make it work, I'll put it on the Instagram page as well. Um, so thank you for listening this week. Great show again. Next show. Thank you, Darren, again. We have for listening. big so, things coming up with the S&D Podcast show. Um, also, thank you for listening to our baseball special. Um, yeah, basically a base, full baseball special. Today. Football starting next week, baby. I can't wait. Yes. Uh, so. so we'll be back next week. Uh, make sure you listen to this week's show. And we're going to play a little more Division 1.1 submission. And we'll... See you guys next week.